everyone, this is Matt Show with Intro Stats. Uh, we're going to continue our discussion now on how to calculate confidence intervals. So last time we were talking about the idea of a confidence interval. We said that it was two numbers that we think the population parameter might be in between. So we're trying to figure out a population parameter and see if it's in between. Um, the Topic of today, how to calculate one population proportion confidence intervals. So this is really important. If you ever try to figure out a population percentage, like the percentage of your customers of your business that will uh, like one of your items or try to find some kind of uh, percentage characteristic of a population, this is what we use this for. All right, so one population proportion confidence intervals. So we found out um, last time that... The, the, the formula we often use for this is the sample statistic plus or minus the margin of error. Again, we're going back to definitions here. We said the margin of error was how far off we think the sample statistic could be from the population parameter. All right, so that's margin of error. Very important definition. But the question we didn't really address last time was how do you calculate that, right? Well, it really depends on the situation. But, if you guys remember in our study of the empirical rule, right? The empirical rule uh, was a study about uh, normal and normal sampling distributions. And uh, we started to looking at um, this idea that two standard, if you look at a, a standard normal curve, uh, about two standard deviations away is 95%. So if you go two standard deviations above and two standard deviations below, then you get about the middle 95%. And it, it made sense that if you're looking for the middle 95% with some kind of uh, situation where you have a normal sampling distribution, you might want to go with two standard errors away. That's kind of where that came from. So uh, one formula that got adapted really quick was this formula, sample statistic plus or minus two times the standard error. So remember, we said standard error was the standard deviation of the sampling distribution, but two standard errors would be about the margin of error. And some people still use that formula as sort of a shortcut, easy formula for a margin of error, two times the standard error. So that sort of that was the formula for a while. But if you think about the number two, the number two is how many standard errors away we need to be, right? Um, empirical rule says it's about 2 for 95%. Okay, well, the number of standard errors is really a z-score, right? We talked about how z-scores are the, um, z-scores have this uh, idea of how many standard errors away. So this 2, in a sense, could be thought of as a z-score. So the formula kind of adapted to z-score times the standard error. And now we can use the z-score for 95% or 90% or 99% when we're calculating our confidence interval. In other words, this z-score can change. Um, now, in, uh, you can look on the previous video about uh, how to calculate critical values, but we did look them up in the previous video, and we found that the critical value z-scores for 90% was 1.645, 95 was 1.96, and for 99% was 2.576. So even though, no, the empirical rule is not wrong, the empirical rule said that for 95% it's about 2, right? Well, 1.96 is about 2, right? It's pretty close. It's just a little bit of accuracy. So these are actually very famous z-scores, very famous in stat world. We all have these numbers memorized. Um, so uh, let's go back to the formula here and see how we could calculate this. Now, um, so I have the z-score. Now, again, before computers, statisticians and mathematicians had to come up with ideas of how could I estimate standard error, right? So they came up with estimation formulas for standard error. And since we're looking at proportions today, percentages, we're going to be using the sample proportion. If you remember, that's p hat. So the formula that statisticians came up with was square root of p hat times 1 minus p hat over n. I know, it looks weird, but it works. Actually, it's very close to what a real sampling distribution would give you. So if we calculated a sampling distribution 
uh, on StatKey, calculated the standard error uh, from the sampling distribution, it would come out pretty close to what this formula would say. So this became the sort of standard formula that most computer programs, if you click one population proportion confidence interval, this is the formula they're pre-programmed to actually calculate for you. They'll put in the z-score, they'll calculate p-hat, and they'll put it in. Usually you just need the amount uh, of successes out of the total number of trials, uh, and then they'll calculate this for you. But I'm going to go ahead and calculate this. Now, I'm going to do an example here. Now, again, this is not something that you do in real life. For the most part, we always have computers do this. This is more about just understanding what is the computer doing, right? So, again, this doesn't mean I want you calculating like this all the time. I want you to get comfortable using technology to calculate. So, let's look at an example. So, we're going to look at this uh, example here. We have a sample of COC stat students from the Canyon Country campus. Um, and we had a total of 108 in the sample, and four of them smoked cigarettes. And my, my, uh, my, uh, my question was, well, what percentage of, of Canyon Country uh, students actually smoke cigarettes? Well, again, I could calculate the sample proportion. Well, let's do that. 4 divided by 108 is about 0 0.037. But does that mean that the population percentage is 0 0.037? I hope you said no, right? Remember our discussion last time when we introduced confidence intervals is this number is going to be off from the population percentage. Uh, there's going to be a margin of error with this, right? So we know that 0 .037 is probably not the actual population percentage. So what could the population percentage be? That's the big question and that's what the confidence interval is going to answer for us. So all I'm going to do is sort of plug in these numbers. I got p hat was 0 .037. Now I do need to know what my z-score was. My critical value z-score for 90% confidence, where we look these up with stat key, 90% was 1.645. By the way, the plus or minus kind of connects with this plus or minus in the formula here. So you can really just put in 1.645, the plus or minus is taken care of in the formula. So, um, so I'm uh, replacing this Z with 1.645, the P hat with 0 .037, the N is the sample size, so 108 people, and there's my original, there's my P hat. Now it's just a matter of crunching some numbers. Uh, if you take the square root of 0 .037 times 1 minus 0 .037 divided by 108, you get 0 .018, about 0 .01816. Okay, that is the standard error. What I always like to do when I'm doing stuff like this is I like to know what was the standard error. So the approximate standard deviation of the sampling distribution is about 0 .018. So I'm going to write that down right here. By the way, that would be about 1.8% if I was thinking about it as a percentage. Okay? All right. Um, now, I'm going to go ahead and multiply 1.645 times the standard error, and that's going to give me the estimate of the margin of error. Okay, so really the most important formula up here right now is really this idea that it's the sample statistic plus or minus the z-score times the standard error. That's sort of the, the, or the critical value times the standard error. That's probably the more important formula up here so you have the idea in your head about how is this calculated and what is the computer doing. Alright, so if we multiply these together we get the margin of error right here, 0 .030. So I like to make a note of that. The margin of error in this case was 0 .030. So we have roughly about a 3% margin of error in this case. Again, the smaller the sample size, the bigger the margin of error. Okay, so not surprising we have quite a big margin of error when we have such a small sample. So if we look here, if I, now you're just going to do adding and subtracting. So if you get the confidence interval, you're just going to take the sample statistic, in this case the sample proportion, 0 .037, plus or minus the margin of error, 0 .030. 
So 0 0.037 minus 0 0.030. 0 0.007. We said last time this is called the lower limit of the confidence interval. Adding them, 0 0.037 plus 0 0.030, we get 0 0.067. That's called the upper limit of the confidence interval. So, if my sample proportion was 0 0.037, that doesn't tell me the population is 0 0.037. It tells me that I, they, we think the population percentage could be anywhere from 0 0.007 to 0 0.067. In other words, if I was writing these as percentages, right, I could write, think of that as 0.7% and 6.7%, right, if I was thinking of those as a percentage. There we go. Okay, so I'm 90% confident, remember we used a 90% confidence level, that the population percentage of stat students at Canyon Country that smoke is somewhere between 0.7% and 6.7%. All right, that's the main idea with this. Now, the question would be, remember, it's not about calculating this, right? The computers are going to calculate this. What I really want to know is, is this accurate? How accurate is this formula? That's what you really want to focus on and being able to explain it. So the accuracy of this formula is really tied to... Uh, Z-scores and standard error, both of whom come from normal sampling distributions. In other words, we'd have to have a relatively normal sampling distribution for sample proportions. So if we're thinking about that, remember our study of sampling distributions for proportions? We needed at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures for the sampling distribution to look normal. That gives us over here two assumptions. Every kind of inferential technique often has assumptions that are tied with telling you when that formula is accurate and when that formula is not accurate. So we wanted a random sample or representative of the data. We want our individuals to be independent of each other. We want at least 10 successes and at least 10 failures. So um, in this case, we definitely have at least 10 people that didn't smoke. In fact, we had 108 minus 4 is 104. But we did fail this one, right? We failed the at least 10 successes, okay?